Hi guys, if you joined us for our online lesson this week, we've been covering electrochemistry and we went into some detail with the galvanic cells, we looked at some redox reactions and we looked at definitions, what is a redox reaction, what is uh, electrochemistry and what is oxidation, what is reduction and what are the two agents, what is an oxidizing agent and what is a reducing agent. If you'd like to go through that stuff again, there is a video on that, so you can just um, visit the YouTube channel, have a look at that video um, if you want to recap a little bit on redox reactions. In this video, I'm quickly going to talk about galvanic cells and electrolytic cells. So I'm only going to talk about three differences between them. There are a few more differences, and obviously for your grade 12 final exams, you need to study all your differences, but I'm going to talk about three that, that people seem to get quite confused with. Um, and before anything, I want to actually just quickly draw out galvanic cells and electrolytic cells because you should be able to, just by seeing them, you should be able to identify. But remember, they can sometimes be shown in a different kind of way. Okay, so on the screen, I'm quickly going to draw on the left-hand side a galvanic cell. We basically have two beakers. Um, the beakers are joined with a salt bridge. We've then got a voltmeter. And we've got two electrodes, one would be the anode, one would be the cathode, obviously depending on what we're using. So this is just the general setup. I'm drawing there the liquid level, so that's the level of your electrolyte. Okay, so that's your galvanic cell. Two half cells joined by a salt bridge, and it has a voltmeter. Electrolytic cell, we have got a single beaker. Instead of a voltmeter, we've got a little battery. We then have two electrodes in the same beaker. Okay, so that's your general setup for an electrolytic cell. Now obviously it can be adapted slightly, but that is your general setup. Differences that are important. If you are given or if you work out the EMF value, that's your voltage value, you will find that for a galvanic cell, the EMF is a positive value. So in other words, the EMF is greater than zero. Whereas for an electrolytic cell, the EMF would be a negative value, which means it's less than zero, okay? A lot of people get confused with that. The other thing that's important is because this EMF is positive for galvanic cells, it means that these reactions take place spontaneously. So spontaneous, whereas the electrolytic cells are non-spontaneous. And if you look at my sketch, that is why we have a battery. We need some extra energy. It's not just that reaction is not going to happen on its own. And the third difference I quickly want to mention there is the uh, energy transformations that take place. So in galvanic cells, we go from chemical energy. We start with chemical energy. We go into electrical energy. That's why we have a voltmeter and not a battery. And it's the complete opposite in electrolytic cells. We go from electrical energy and we go into, we create chemical energy. So it goes the other way around. Okay, so these are three differences that are quite important that tend to confuse people a lot. Like I said, these are not all the differences that are out there. So read up a bit, um, actually really study it in detail and um, make sure you understand. This is a really, really important section for grade 12 um, chemistry. I also quickly want to discuss some of the similarities between these two. Okay, so similarities between these two. Both of them have oxidation and reduction. And oxidation always happens at the anode. It doesn't matter if you have a galvanic cell or an electrolytic cell. Oxidation will be at the anode and reduction will be at the cathode. That is like a rule you can learn. It doesn't matter if it's a galvanic cell or an electrolytic cell, that um, stays constant. Something else is the flow of electrons. So in other words, the electron direction will always go from anode to cathode. That is also a constant. So it will always flow from anode to cathode, both in the galvanic cells as well as in the electrolytic cells. 
So I hope this video made sense, this recap video made sense for you. I just touched on a bit of galvanic and electrolytic cells. I didn't go into detail, but if you do have questions and if you are registered as one of our online students, then um, you can feel free to pop us an email if you've got any questions. Um, if you would like to find out more about how to become um, a student with us, then you are welcome to pop over to our website. And there's the web address over there. So it's amandaowenonline.co.za. And we offer online lessons for grade 10, 11, and 12 physical science based on the South African curriculum. It is The lessons are given in real time, and they are interactive. So it's a, it's a nice, different, new way of basically... Uh, doing extra lessons in physical science and like I said the lessons are interactive so you can ask questions as well so visit our website if you'd like to find out more um, if you're following our videos then you can follow us on our YouTube channel or you can follow us um, on Facebook because we will be posting all of our videos on Facebook and then you can search for us on Facebook um, you can search for Mando and online education and follow our videos um, that way as well